I'm going to jump from Paul and Storm, a funny new song group, a funny song group I've only just discovered, uh, and I was just laughing about them, to the best articles about Trump, about Trump's win. Uh, just to show you what happens when you start to have a memory. So uh, here's what's interesting, is that I've got an article, best articles about Trump, but I also have a whole series of articles about Trump. I mean, these are, uh, I've been following this for a while. In fact, uh, here you'll see a little bookmark at the top of my screen. These are articles and videos from just year two of the Trump administration, not counting uh, a variety of, of incidents that happened during, like Kavanaugh's confirmation hearings, or uh, Blasey Ford and Kavanaugh testifying, uh, which was a big enough thing that uh, I have the word boof in the Urban Dictionary connected to it. Um, uh, each of these is an article. So here's a Vox article. Every time Ford and Kavanaugh dodged a question in one chart, actually a really interesting uh, chart. Uh, here's a, uh, a YouTube video about Brett Kavanaugh screaming about his innocence. Uh, anyway, really interesting. So let me go back to uh, the best articles about Trump's win not to make a point about how overwhelming it is to have all these uh, different thoughts in your brain, but rather how interesting it is that you can actually have uh, super useful things right at hand. So at, at some point I realized, oh my God, a couple of these uh, people are writing really insightful pieces about how Trump is, uh, is figuring things out. So for example, there was an article uh, by uh, Maureen Dowd. So I, I, Maureen Dowd has written a whole bunch of columns. So uh, her nickname is Modo. I have a thought called Modo's Articles. So I put in uh, an article, that a column she wrote right after Trump wins, uh, titled Absorbing the Impossible, in which uh, she points to uh, taking Trump seriously, not literally, which is uh, also in this list. But really, um, one of the things that Maureen says in this piece is, as flawed a candidate as Trump was, he had his finger on the pulse. And then I'm, I'm, because it's in, in uh, it looks like a sentence, not uppercase for each letter, I know that this is probably a quote from the article that I just uh, pasted here underneath it. So one of the interesting things was that uh, the press was taking Trump literally but not seriously, yet his supporters took him seriously but not literally. This is a piece written by Selena Zito in uh, The Atlantic magazine, and I put it in my brain originally uh, under a thought called, Will Trump Make It to Election Day? <clears throat> this is just after the Trump tapes, so Trump was recorded having extremely lewd conversation about women uh, back in 2005. This is the Access Hollywood tape. This is while Trump is the Republican nominee already. I have this link to a thought, Trump the sexist, misogynist, philander, and abuser. So that's also connected to Trump's affairs and women Trump has assaulted and accosted. Uh, Trump preying on women, etc. So if I go back to taking Trump seriously, not literally, that to me was a big insight about how Trump got past the media. In fact, a, a whole series of other thoughts about how Trump, I think, intentionally played himself up as the clown, as, as the fool in the election, because the easiest person to ignore is the fool, the one everybody is positive won't make it through the process. Um, I think that was actually quite intentional. And I can, I can also point to a series of videos I did uh, right here, actually, while Trump wins. There it is. Trump won, now what? Uh, <clears throat> so after Trump wins, I put six videos up. Uh, actually, I put five videos up trying to explain what on earth had happened. If I, go back, <clears throat> if I go back here to best articles about Trump's win, another interesting path uh, toward who explained how Trump was going to win uh, is Michael Moore's piece, Five Reasons Why Trump Will Win. And I listed the five underneath. The Midwest math, or welcome to our Rust Belt Brexit, uh, the last stand of the angry white man, the Hillary problem, uh, the depressed Sanders vote, and the Jesse Ventura effect. They elected him because they could. And got to say, Michael Moore was right on this. Uh, he uh, winds up as a Republican nominee in part because of these sorts of things. Now, the Hillary problem, she was the wrong nominee, in fact, is a different thought in my brain. And there's a bunch of different evidence. So here's lessons from the 2016 US election cycle, lessons from the Trump upset victory. That's interesting. 
I wonder if I have that connected to uh, best articles about. There we go. I, I need to come back here. I think I, I forgot that I even had this. Anyway, Hillary was the wrong nominee. Here's a HuffPo article, The Democratic Party Deserved to Die, by Crystal Ball. Uh, voters were offered a choice between a possibility of catastrophe in Trump and a guarantee of mediocrity in Clinton. That smells like insight to me. So that was also an article that I listed under best articles about Trump's win. If I go back to Hillary was the wrong nominee, uh, Donald Trump's shocking success is an elegant piece by uh, Frank Bruni in the New York Times again uh, that says basically Hillary was the wrong nominee. Um, it wasn't just sexism that took Hillary down. Uh, is another article, is it, actually a, another statement coming in from Lessons from Trump's Upset Victory. So uh, an article here by Naomi Klein that Trump defeated Clinton, not women. Super interesting things. So one of the points I want to make is that by slowly over time, as I filter each day, taking notes about the things that I see. Uh, so for example, if Michael Moore lists five reasons why Trump is going to win, why don't I write down the five reasons in my brain and then I can connect them to other thoughts and other logic around that particular statement. So most people aren't collecting notes this way. Most people don't have access to what they care about this way. Um, 